Angela Issa and I'm a biology major with a minor in biochemistry and molecular biology here at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. I'm currently studying the effects of diet on breast cancer risk in the lab of Dr. Kathleen Arcaro in the Veterinary and Animal Sciences Department. Cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States and it has proven difficult to both treat and cure based on the fact that it is such a multifactorial disease. This is partly because cancer can arise from a number of distinct genetic lesions or inherited mutations. Interestingly enough, inherited genetic mutations play a major role in only about 5-10% to of all cancers. This is a small percentage, and this means that 90-95% to of all other cancers must be caused by something other than inherited genetic factors. So what else could be playing a role in this widespread incidence of cancer in the United States? Well, in fact, other factors influencing your cancer risk include where you live, what chemicals you've been exposed to, whether or not you're a smoker, how active you are, and even what your dietary habits are like. This list could go on and on, but what I am particularly interested in is studying how diet can affect your cancer risk. So why are things like this important? Well, if we know which foods or lifestyle factors can reduce our lifetime risk of developing cancer, then we can make informed decisions about how to live our lives in an effort to ultimately reduce that risk. And while it is estimated that one-third of all cancer deaths in the United States could be prevented through appropriate dietary modification, observational and case control studies support only a marginal relationship between diet and breast cancer risk. But why are these results so weak? Well, there may be several reasons for these weak and inconsistent results in epidemiological studies. First, it is difficult to accurately estimate food and nutrient intake, especially in these epidemiological studies where participants are self-recording their dietary intake. Second, in case control studies, the diet at the time of cancer may not be related to the development of cancer. Also, it is difficult to establish causal relationships between certain foods and cancer risk when individuals are consuming many different types of foods. So what I am seeking to do with my research is circumvent the limitations of these observational and case control studies by carrying out a randomized dietary intervention pilot study assessing the effects of increased fruit and vegetable intake on breast cancer risk. This study will be completed in breastfeeding women and I will be using breast milk as a route of studying the effects of this intervention on very specific biomarkers of risk. Because I am measuring these biomarkers in breast milk, which contains millions of sloughed epithelial cells, as well as immune cells and proteins, I will be measuring the effects of this dietary intervention on cancer-specific biomarkers directly in the breast. I will be measuring levels of inflammatory and angiogenic markers, which can influence cell growth and prolifer proliferation, as well as epigenetic markers, which play a critical role in gene expression. Finally, not only will I be assessing the effects of this dietary intervention on maternal health, but I will also be assessing the effects of this dietary intervention on a breastfeeding infant's gut microbiome, whereas this may ultimately help to assess infant health outcomes. In this way, we are not only seeking a mechanistic relationship between fruit and vegetable intake and reduced breast cancer risk, but we are also assessing the effects of maternal fruit and vegetable intake on a breastfeeding infant's gut microbiome. Thank you.